My name is Clive and I identify as he, him. But I think we need to have a discussion. And I think we need to have a bit of a discussion, especially people who are around my age, whatever that might be. You see, I think stories heal and stories heal other people's stories. So I've always shared my story to my community who've wanted to listen. So I'm going to do that again. Um, so I'm going to share just a bit about my he, him journey and why I think we need to start thinking differently around the pronoun thing. Some of you and me. So last night I posted on Facebook, just tongue in cheek, I said, I can't possibly use they, them um, because it's incorrect grammatically, which I've heard a lot of people saying. I've heard it in a corporate recently. And then I followed it on sarcastically by saying, don't y'all agree? Yeah, yeah, in it. All things that used to be grammatically incorrect, which are now perfectly acceptable. Some people got the sarcasm. Some people messaged me personally to say thank you for speaking out publicly about it. Now, I want to say, in case you didn't get the sarcasm, it was very sarcastic. I can use they, them. I've edited magazines and it was a sub-editor, chief sub-editor for magazines. And I used they, them all the time. In fact, whenever there was a, a, a some kind of reference to he and where the people wanted me to add and he or she could do this, I would just say they could do it. I was way ahead of my time, I think. And no one ever wrote into the magazine to say that it was grammatically incorrect. It's been something that's used in the collective um, for years. Uh, and it's always been used when you wanted to not refer to a specific gender because when I started in magazines, everyone was writing he and then everyone started writing she instead. And I just thought, why not make it they? Because it's inclusive. I was born and was meant to be a girl. My mom was desperate for a daughter. She had lost two daughters, one to adoption. Um, and I since found that sister, hello, and had a miscarriage in between my brother and I, there was a girl. So she was desperate to have a daughter. And I was meant to be Leanne. When I was born, my brother was devastated that I wasn't a girl because he'd been promised a sister. And my mom was mortified that I was another son, but she embraced me as a son and raised me as a son, as did my dad. When I started primary school, I used to fantasize and dream about being able to go into a machine that would turn me into a girl. I did not get being a boy. I didn't fit in with what the other boys are doing. The other boys had already around six years old, five years old, started teasing me for being slightly effeminate. For I remember people asking me if I was a girl or a boy. And I remember thinking that uh, surely I was a boy. Um, they told me I was a boy, but people were questioning that. I then kind of went through my high school journey, uh, sorry, my primary school journey, carrying on as a boy. I mean, there was no other way to be, really. And I used to continuously dream about being able to fall pregnant. It sounds weird, I know, but it was these were like literally in my mind and I used to beat myself up about them. I, I so I, I so loved the idea of being a girl, even though I was a boy. And then I went to high school and they bashed the femininity out of me. I was strangled. I was beaten. I was told I was queer. I was called a faggot. I was called everything. I was, I, I it was, there were bruises because I just was weak in their eyes as a man. And I always fought to try and be more masculine, even though I didn't feel like the man they wanted me to be. And I knew I never would be. Then I came out as being gay. And even in the gay community, straight gay, gay people were saying to me, you need to be more straight acting. So even within the community of people that I had come out to were telling me that I wasn't masculine enough. Sometimes people used to say, oh, he's just dramatic. He did acting, etc." But I have never fit into the masculine mold. And in fact, 
I am pissed off with people who made me. Yo, my high school years, you guys who might be listening to this who went to high school with me, ooh, you have a lot to atone for, not just with me, but so many other boys, because we didn't fit your masculine mold. And now you're getting upset when a bunch of people who are refusing to fit your mold of masculinity or femininity and are now starting to say they don't want to be seen in that category, you're getting mad because they're standing up. And you know what? I wish I could have stood up. I wish I could have been a them. A they or a them would have made me feel so much more me. Because I don't, I I really do not want to be seen as a male if male is what you told me male was. So step back. Get to know people's stories. The fact is, is that not everyone is you. Empathy means that we accept other people's stories and we don't put our bias and our stories onto it. You don't know my story until now. I still identify as he, him. I have moments where I think, should I add them onto it? Because I want to somehow fight back against that masculine ideal that people said I needed to be. Maybe you want to go back to my high school and be a them and say, I mean, I went to a boy's school <laughs> and, and I wasn't a boy, <laughs> according to them. Them. <laughs> so for you, cis, pronouned people, come on, lighten up. They, them, you don't know their story. What they're doing is standing up to you because you've said this is what you need to be. And how beautiful is it to be in a world where suddenly people are saying, fuck you. I'm being what I want to be. We need to embrace that as a world. We need to make sure that people, that children grow up knowing they can do anything. They can be anything as long as it's good for them, as long as it makes them feel accepted and that they belong. I didn't belong as a male, even though I am a male. I was placed as a male. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to place pronouns on me, but you're not looking at where I belong. This is not a placement discussion. This is a belonging discussion. And when you argue placement, you create burden. When you embrace belonging, you create gift. That's just my little ramble. 